Greetings and welcome to part 3 of my series on the state of South Africa. Barring any major unforeseen developments, this will be the last episode in this series as I feel I've given you a well-rounded enough view of what life is like in this country. To bring this series to a close, I feel I should explain the cause which lies at the heart of all of South Africa's major problems right now. It can be summarized in the mindset embodied by a simple sentence. That sentence is, it's our turn now. To put it as plainly as I can, it seems that the vast majority of those in political power in South Africa are of the mindset that because of their time either in prison or in exile due to their opposition to apartheid, they are now owed lives of comfort and opulence. When confronted with undeniable evidence that South Africa is quickly becoming a failed state, they will simply turn around and react with expressions of cold, unfeeling arrogance. The general attitude seems to be, well, we ended apartheid, so now we should be able to do whatever we like, and you, as an ordinary citizen, should just shut up and take it. As a result of this mindset, policies are now enshrined in South African law, which prioritize the employment of people based on arbitrary characteristics such as race and gender, rather than merit and their ability to actually perform in the position. In fact, if large local companies fail to comply with these laws and hire based on the racial quota system that has been set up, they can be and often are fined extremely large amounts by government. And then the same politicians who are so vocal and push so hard to see these laws made will turn around and express shock and dismay that our economy is buckling under the weight of incompetence and inefficiency. The ultimate irony in all this is that this kind of affirmative action known to South Africans as broad-based black economic empowerment has not even been successful in its stated goal, which was supposedly to open the doors of employment to all South Africans. Rather, what we have seen play out is a small, well-connected elite reaping the benefits of knowing the right people at the right time, while average South Africans see very little improvement in their day-to-day -day quality of life. Because, my friends, here's the real deal. Despite all their high-minded talk of revolutionary ideals and being servants of the people, black South African politicians do not care about their black constituents. They care only for themselves and those fortunate enough to fall within the bounds of their immediate social circles. I do not doubt that many people would write off much of what I have said in the course of these recordings as the ramblings of a bitter racist. That's just the world we live in today. But those of you who have stuck with this series from beginning to end have my thanks. And 
If you have found what I've shared to be useful, then please consider supporting me either through Patreon, PayPal, or by picking something up from my Teespring store. For now, farewell. <laughs>